Hello, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about the Jazz Associated Board Grade 1, giving you some teacher's tips and student tips to help you play these pieces. I've done a number of videos about this and they've proved very popular, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll put the links below, but I thought it'd be nice to go grade specific. So I'm going to have a look at Grade 1, List A, because it'd be too long a video I think to go through all of them. And I'm only scratching the surface, but I just want to give you a few teaching tips. I haven't uh, I'm keeping with the tradition of jazz, so I haven't I haven't already planned this, so we'll see what comes out. So I don't know what I'm going to say, but we'll we'll see. And so hopefully I'll give you some tips and a few top secret tips as well uh, when playing the jazz pieces, and also some advice on teaching the jazz pieces from somebody who plays jazz music um, a lot. So without further ado, let's look at list A with some of these tips and see if they can help. Right. So what we got? Okay. So the first piece is a blues in G, Bedford Square Blues, and we have this lovely... It's great, isn't it? Okay, so let's talk predominantly about this improvisation section. We have this left hand doing this. Now, written in the sheet music is to hold that for two bars, so eight beats in total. I find this can be... Uh, this is not great for the student because they lose the sense of the four beats. So I would be tempted, if when you're teaching this, to actually go to one, two, three, four, actually play it. So ignore the ties. So the student knows where it is. Same here, play it. I think that's really important because otherwise the student doesn't know where the downbeat is, where beat one is. Uh, the Associated Board recommend those notes. I would also recommend getting familiar with the blues scale in G. And also you have those notes there. So the first thing I'll do with this tune is to make sure they can just play in four. Pick those three notes and go one, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, four, one, two, a three, four, one. Move to the next notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, a three, four, one, two, a three, four, one. Now, so when you feel that they're secure with four beats, then go to do minimum two beats. So one, two, three, four, 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 one. If they're secure with two beats, I would go to four beats. So crotch it. So you might have got them go one, three. So we've now got to four, so we're playing four in a bar, then go to eight, then ultimately swung quavers. So that'd be one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four and... Then you can get the student to take some of those away. starting to so their solos are coming out um they've built from the ground up if that makes sense uh, of course the more advanced student may, be, may feel like using the blue scale scale again rhythmic a little bit more advanced there's a lot of lovely things in the tune though so you could unpack some of those so for example you could take bar three 
of the tune and play some of that backwards so you could so there's some ideas there look so then you could switch them around like I did there this is great like the introduction goes why not start with this backwards so this is where you grab ideas of the tune for this tune so yeah that was great bar one so a phrase there and you've and and you're you're improvising on the piece of music you're not just making something random up you're actually improvising on um uh, on a tune so you're not just playing over a set of chord changes so there's a lovely idea there and then you could take little bits of those phrase T backwards so let's call that phrase A And then think about having a, a counter phrase to that phrase B. Or if you're in a big band, imagine these are your saxophones or your trumpets and these are your trombones. So you go. It's just a nice method, something to think about. You know, these are all concepts, of course, but just somewhere to unlock that with the student. So that's Bedford Square Blues. Some thoughts on playing that. Let's see what we have next. Oh, oh, the longest, the longest title in the piece. Oh, in the in the grave, should I say? Oh Lord, don't let them drop that atomic bomb on me. So with this piece, you have this. And then in the improvisation, the associate board don't recommend those notes. Again, they recommend the first three notes of the box. Same theory would apply that I've just talked to you about Bedford Square. Start with semi briefs build to two beat notes, build to crotchets, and then build to eight waivers. If you feel brave enough, you may even try triplets with the student as well. Uh, so here, I would be tempted though, to have a bit of fun with the students exploring this. And I would get them to move. I would, I, I'd have some fun. that wasn't quite as successful and you might want to so then so using more of the tune might be a very nice idea with this one exploring some of the the theme from the tune equally you could have Also use the blue scale starting on C. There's a number of fingering you could use. I tend to like the three and then the two at the end for those black notes. And then so you could explore that. top secret tip don't tell everybody this but often jazz musicians and musicians that improvise play this blues that's in C but they also play a blue scale built from the tonic but six notes higher so instead of playing the blue scale in C they use a blue scale built on A okay so then you get this sound something top secret tip that you could explore as well bass groove same sort of setup it's another blues in g so with bass groove i would uh, apply the same kind of setting to the bedford square blues um slinky thing great tune actually great tune same sort of issue here with slinky thing you've got this you've got this left hand bass goes one two three four one two three four 
So that pickup note, I would suggest, is quite hard for the student at first. So I'd be tempted to announce the beat. One, two, a three, four, one. And I'd probably ignore that pickup note for the moment. Two, a three, four, one. And then we change. I would ignore the tie. I would start to put the pickup note in a little bit later on. I wouldn't put it in at first. The same rule would apply. This is a minor blues. Here's the D blue scale. Same rule. Get them to play four. One, two, a three, four, a oh, one, two, a three, four, a oh, one. And get them to play two. One, two, a three, four, one, two, a three. Then four. One, two, three, four, one. Quavers. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Maybe triplets if they're brave enough. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Go So you get the idea. Okay, that's well worth exploring in this uh, in this piece. So that is slinky thing. Okay, and so that's a uh, not all of the pieces but a few from uh, the beginning of the grade one A section. So there you go, I included a few top tips. I went through most of the pieces. Uh, some of them repeat, if you like, in their key centres and things. So I hope you find that helpful and useful. And the reason I do these videos is to expand your playing, because music is uh, such a sublime, wonderful thing, and I want everybody to be able to do it. So if you're a teacher in the classical tradition who's new to teaching jazz, I hope you'll find some of these uh, concepts useful. They are only concepts and you can teach it many, many different ways. But I hope this will shine a light in that dark room and uh, reveal that object and help your students and things. So thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe for more and bye for now.